Have you ever wondered who was the most powerful man in Europe in the 15th century? Was it the Pope as the head of the Catholic Church? Was it Charles V, the ruler of the Holy Roman Empire, Spain, and Netherlands? The answer is no. Even these two powerful men would have to answer to a much more influential figure. And that man was a banker who was amongst the richest in the world at the time, with an estimated wealth of about $400 billion in today's money. And this man was Jakob Fugger. In this video, I'd like to explore the incredible life of Jakob Fugger. We need to understand how he used his money to end up transforming the history of the entire continent of Europe. Unlike many powerful European figures of medieval times, Jakob Fugger actually came from very humble origins. His family were peasants who had only recently become wealthy thanks to a thriving clothes business. But still, in his early years, Fugger would be found roughing it out and even sleeping on the floor sometimes. What's interesting is that Fugger originally intended to become a priest. However, that might have changed because later on his family discovered his talent for finance which is why they asked him to take charge of the family business. He was even sent to Venice as a merchant apprentice to learn about the financial practices there. By his mid-twenties, he was given control of a family agency in Innsbruck in Austria, where he showed incredible acumen for business. But later on, he took a gamble that would completely redefine his life's trajectory. You see, at the time, Austria was under the rule of the Habsburg family. The Habsburgs were one of the most noble, powerful families in all of Europe. And during Fugger's time, the Habsburgs were on a stellar rise and they were controlling the crown of the Holy Roman Empire. And Jakob Fugger saw an opportunity. He had his eyes on Archduke Sigismund. Sigismund was a member of the House of Habsburgs and he was the Duke of Austria from 1439. Sigismund, however, was incredibly bad with finance. He spent very little on his subjects, but instead he threw lavish parties for himself and he spent his money very poorly. That's why he was always short on money, and he frequently had to borrow for more loans. That's where Jakob Fugger came in, and he was able to become one of Sigismund's financiers. Although the amount of money that Fugger lent was tiny compared to other bankers, it solidified his relationship with the family, and it allowed Fugger access to converted mines. This also kickstarted Fugger's career as a banker. Around this time, Fugger made the biggest bet of his life. You see, at a certain point, Sigismund's financial irresponsibility became so bad that it made him too big of a risk for most bankers to loan money in Venice. Fugger, however, saw an opportunity. He risked almost his entire family fortune to finance Sigismund. But Fugger was smart. He put on some really bold conditions on the loan including granting him control over the state treasury. At that time, the other bankers would laugh at him because they thought it was foolish, if not dangerous. However, imagine their surprise when wagons of silver from the Archduke began arriving at Fugger's warehouses. The Habsburgs kept their end of the bargain, and Fugger was now a very rich man. However, this was just the beginning. What set Fugger apart was that he realized how power and money were interrelated. He understood that wealth gave him power, but power allowed him to keep his wealth secure. Now, Sigismund saw Fugger as a trusted friend. However, Fugger simply saw Sigismund as important, but nevertheless a disposable chess piece in the game of power. When Fugger realized that Sigismund was growing really unpopular, he discarded him in favor of his nephew, Maximilian I. Fugger financed Maximilian's successful bid to take the imperial throne of the Holy Roman Empire. In return, Fugger was granted the rights to purchase the rich Hungarian copper mines. But Fugger was smart. He didn't just rely on this relationship. He knew that the goodwill of the emperor wouldn't last forever. That's why he had been building relationships with many prominent members of the German court. Now this turned out to be a very smart idea by Fugger, because there was a point where Emperor Maximilian tried to cut Fugger out, but Fugger put pressure on the influential dukes and bishops to make Maximilian relent. It was a reminder of who really was in control here. So with his rising influence, Fugger also took control of the transfer of donations from Germany to Rome. This effectively made him the top financier in Rome. 
He also gained considerable influence with the Pope. You see, he took it upon himself to pay for the protection of the Pope. This is actually what started the tradition of the Swiss Papal Guards. He would then utilize this to secure Rome's support of the Habsburgs against the other powerful noble families. Throughout his lifetime, he would serve seven popes and mint coins for four of them. But Fugger's biggest, perhaps most profitable move was when he was able to secure the rights to the copper mines by helping Austria gain control over Hungary. You see, the Ottoman Empire was making their way into Europe, conquering kingdom after kingdom. Fugger was therefore concerned about his mines. He convinced the Emperor Maximilian to negotiate a marriage alliance that left Hungary in the Habsburgs' hands. This would lead to redrawing the map of Europe, known as the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Fugger needed the Habsburgs to be in charge of Hungary, just to ensure he was able to protect his holdings. In doing this, Fugger helped unite two powerful kingdoms to solidify the defense of a Christian Europe against the Ottomans. As you can see, this one man, without holding any noble titles or land, at least at the beginning, was shaping the trajectory of an entire continent. However, his biggest contribution was revolutionizing finance in Europe. You see, charging interest or usury was considered illegal in Christian Europe. He used his influence with the Pope to legalize interest. Following this, debt refinancing became increasingly common in Europe. Fugger can also be credited with exporting the financial practices he learned in Italy to the rest of the continent. Beyond that, he was also responsible for financing several important voyages to establish new trade links. Many say that Fugger was responsible for financing the Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan, who led the first successful circumnavigation of the globe. But not everything Fugger did ended up playing out in his favor. The legalization of usury or interest that was pushed by Fugger angered many devout Christians. And amongst them was Martin Luther, who we now know today as the instigator of the Protestant Reformation. The movement would sweep across Europe, splitting the once unified Christendom into two. Eventually, this would lead to the Thirty Year War, a conflict that was so brutal it killed off one-fifth of Europe's population. In the Holy Roman Empire, it amounted to half of all people. The war would ultimately bring ruin to Fugger's family business as well, and eventually his influence would dwindle. Despite the impressive legacy that Fugger left behind, you don't really hear a lot about him today, compared to other historical figures. Maybe he actually wanted it to be this way. Even though Fugger was the richest man of his time, he was actually a man of very few wants and needs. Unlike other wealthy individuals at the time, he never built magnificent palaces or commissioned massive cathedrals. He seemed solely focused on expanding his business and bringing financial reforms to the continent. In the long term, it did benefit Europe immensely, but not so much in the short term. There's another very important family that you need to know about that shaped the history of finance as we know it today. And they are the Rothschilds. I made a video about the Rothschilds, which you can check it out over here. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you soon.